What's up, DigiDestins? This is Kyle D, better known as Ride My Avatar, and it's another video on how to can counter a deck in this format. So we're going to be talking about none other than Numemon because a lot of people are very scared of this deck coming in. So without further ado, let's talk about some counters that really make them have a bad day, shall we? As you know, the heart and soul of this deck really comes down to Numemon X, and then if we go right into it, the fact that it plays Ukumon for days core of the deck is that there's two variants here there's a purple base which doesn't really care about the egg qualifications you could even play a red base and the deck's not going to change much but depending on what you do here it matters what you can do and there's a black base one that follows with the sunes you know all these stuff adds up and eventually but the fact that numemon makes the sticky situation a lot worse is that numemon x Produces a body every time you lose out on it and some of your bodies can tuck the Numemon X to replay and do some crazy shenanigans and then you do have like the consistency of BT16 Ukumon plus the promo Ukumon that's going to gain you a memory there are some choking points that can really make them have a bad day especially when it requires certain mechanics to play right and taking that into account we're going to look at things that matter first off red has some decent counter movements the thing is especially going first if ukumon's going first if they didn't just do see their bt16 ukumon they're most i mean you know new Mimon stuff the ukumon from bt16 being able to just choke for one is not a bad trade-off but if they didn't find that and they did evolve into something else in raising that requires them to now play the new Mamon that's a three cost, which will inevitably give you plus value here. But taking that into account, sometimes the board gets extremely la large because then you can punish them with Crimson Blaze. Then you have like Gutsuman here that says you can't play Digimon by effects. This will be a vital card in that matchup because they have, you know, Mumsimon X that wants to play a body. They have you know, new Mimon that wants to play a body, stuff like that, preventing them from being able to cycle and shut down that really does matter at times. And then anything that can say you can't gain memory really holds, you know, some problems for them. You know, also Valkyrie Mon Ace is huge against this deck. And what I mean by that is by all your opponent's Digimon gets minus 5,000 DP for the turn. That blanket effect is nasty. This thing stops a lot of their tempo because you clear their board really easily with a Valkyrie Ace, and now they're really falling behind. Valkyrie Ace is probably a good matchup pick. They're even playing Valkyrie Ace because of that minusing 5,000 DP and being able to do some shenanigans. And stuff like the, you know, Sylphimon deck has things like a Qualamon here that says delete when your opponent's Digimon 3,000 DP. Especially if they go on first and they slam down Numemon before the Numemon X is even live. This is going to punish them a little bit because now that sets them back a little bit. And depending, you'll just choke them to one, which is not terrible. Then you have like Linksmon here that says when did you evolve when your opponent's Digimon gets minus 3,000 DP for the turn. That matters too. You know, being able to remove threats off the board, especially early on, is going to matter. So just keep this in mind when you're thinking about it especially with raid mechanics too just being able to swing into the target that might be unsuspended really does help out but really it comes down to probably Valkyrimon ace and crimson blaze and gutsumon really shining well for that numemon matchup just keep this on your radar when you're thinking about it blue actually has a lot more tools in their arsenal to kind of slow them and hinder them but taking a look at it you know, Minoki Betamon's really the only blocker they kind of got. But you shut down at least one of the Numes, I mean the Ukumons, that they're not a, a going to be able to extend plays with that. Which is good, because shutting down their memory gain is a good choking point. Zudamon Ace is a really annoying card for that deck. Because it strips two, there's most likely they're, by the time they're ready to go into it, Zudamon Ace is going to strip and then bounce the threat off the board. And if that's the case, they're now back on a clock and especially taking out that Numemon X constantly and just getting into the trash makes it really hard for them. And Zudemon Ace isn't easily outed by natural means of the deck's core values. And that means they have to probably play a little bit more in raising to try to out Zudemon Ace, then deal with it. Especially if it's not black base, Zudemon Ace is kind of just like their Achilles heel there. Same thing with where Grumon Ace. Being able to stop them from suspending means that they're not dying. And if they're not dying, they're most likely not able to play 
play more consistently, especially if you can get into more of the Metal Gurumon shenanigans. But even this Metal Gurumon's making it they can't spend, really important there. You know, Metal Gurumon X Antibody, being able to put in that work by bouncing their threat back to hand means they're not getting their protection procced. You know, Foxfire is just ridiculous. You know, just being able to bounce a threat to their hand instead is huge. You know, you have like Giga Death as well, being able to spend one of your opponent's Digimon and then place up to 10 of your opponent's suspended Digimon at the bottom of their owner's deck in any order. Really scary for that deck. Mega Death, spend one of your opponent's Digimon and then return your opponent's suspended Digimon to its owner's hand. Being able to bounce and bottom deck is huge because now that Numemon X isn't cycling, it's just going to sit there in the graveyard until they're ready. Then you have like Pyildramon here that says suspend all opponents Digimon with as many or fewer Digilutions as the Digimon. Most likely you're suspending their whole board. And then if you DNA, none of their suspended Digimon may unsuspend until the end of their turn. Means it locks them out from being able to swing and apply pressure. Means they have to just play around and just do some crazy shenanigans. And they'll just remove the Pyildramon. If you're ready to go off again, you're, you're going to set them back even more. Then you have like Mirage Galga that just says, you know, bouncing return one of five or lower to its Digimon's owner's hand and then gaining that memory. If they are playing well into Mirage, it's a tougher matchup because a bad Mirage player will get beat by a good Numemon player any day of the week, but a bad Numemon player will get river stomp by a bad Mirage player or an extremely good Mirage player. Just keep that in mind that Numemon can self-punish itself against in the Mirage matchup, but Mirage definitely has a lot of tools, especially because it plays Zudamon Ace in its lineup. Then you have like Imperial Jamon just being able to, you know, bottom their deck, their stuff is just huge. You know, even Bonds of Friendship, being able to return one of your opponents level five or lower Digimon to the bottom of its owner's deck is huge. Like I said, if you get it off and they're now not able to proc their ex antibody shenanigans, they're going to have a bad time. Then yellow has some decent tools, especially like Revelation of Light. Then you have like Marcus here, which, you know, the big thing about Numemon is that they can't get rid of your tamers very easy, easily. That's going to be a problem for them, especially if you can get your Marcuses just to be able to pop a few of their, you know, hard play guys right off the bat. You're going to get some decent value out of that. Then you have like Pillamon being another option that just stops them because if they can't play by effects, they're not going to have any options. Revelation or Light, if they hit two of this in there, in your security, GG's right one after another, they're not going to have a good time. Usually they're just going to press on a little bit just to hit one. They'll lose a little bit of their board and then they'll try to build up again. It's kind of their main strat. It's just very tough because hitting Revelation of Light is just a huge minusing 5,000 DP effect. Then you have like Rapidmon X Antibody, which is huge, especially because it suspends all their Digimon. And then while this Digimon has Rapid or X Antibody and it's Digimon and Evolution, all your opponent's suspended Digimon gets minus 4,000 DP. That minus swing 4,000 DP hits almost everything in that deck, minus their level fives and their mega. As long as you can clear the wide board, it gets really annoying. And especially if you can clear out close to everything, especially Rapidmon X will gain that two memory value. And that's going to really punish them a little bit. And then, you know, Heaven's Judgment, being able to clear the board and maybe if they they only had one Nume, they'll get one body back. But clearing out that board really punishes them a little bit. Just being able to reset. Then green has some decent tools, especially like you take into Pumamon. They can't play by effects. You have Lulimon Ace being able to suspend one of your one of their Digimon, you know, suspend one of their Digimon and then return one of your opponents suspended Digimon with 5000 DP or less bottom of the deck. Most likely this means if they just done the new Maimon shenanigans, just got to new Maimon X and they weren't able to go up further. Lilymon Ace is going to bottom that thing real quick. And just being able to bottom deck is huge, especially similar thing with Hydramon being able to suspend and then just bottom deck that new Maimon X stack. Go bye bye. That just punishes them a little bit there. Same thing with like Leopardmon X as well. As long as you can, you know, bounce one of their stuff, it just makes them have a hard time just keeping that body on board mega gargo being able to lock them down the problem comes down to getting to mega gargo because if they can climb up before or they're not going to swing in to a mega gargo ever they're just going to minus the dp off the you know good boy of rapid mega gargo ace is not the best counter anything that they it takes time to set up you know if it's very choreographed aces are very easy to read into and they'll usually punish the ace play but 
anything that is like full evolutionary or hard playing removal is really bad for them you know like even giga missile giant missile that just be able to spend return one of your opponents suspended digimon by the bottom of the deck and then return one of their digimon can't unsuspend until the until their end of their turn locking down their turn is really important especially certain swings will make them have a bad time and like Grand Day Soul as well, being able to, you know, bottom one and they're suspended. Just get rid of the new Maimon X on board is just huge. Then Black's got access like Chumon, like Machine Jermon here. That is very important. If you can get the Machine Jermon live as soon as possible, you know, Analog Mans and stuff like that, they're not getting through Machine Jermon. But it is a upwards climb because Mugen takes a bit of time. You know, Darugamon, this new one, with the ability to, you know, collision force a block. You can take out two bodies very easily and then, you know, delete one of your opponent's unsuspended Digimon. You can take out three Digimon usually with this Darugamon play because most likely you're going to have the Tamer live. Climbing up from your ultimate and raising, bringing this up, Digivolve, pop one, gets their body back, you know, or they don't get it back. And then you just swing in, forcing them to block, and then boom, they're just going to have a bad time because you can at least take out three bodies with this. And usually being able to take out three bodies is huge. Then you have like Vikemon Ace being able to de-digivolve, you know, your opponent's Digimon. And then if they have, if none of their Digimon with, none of their Digimon with one or fewer Digivolution can uh, suspend until the end of their turn, which is vitally important to take that into account. As long as they're not going to be able to climb right back into their good boys here, which I mean, Mumsymon X is really the problem that you have to worry about when you're bike mon acing but you know what sometimes that's all it takes but being able to shut down their turn of the ukumons kind of going at you is really good you know dorogen is really powerful as well you know delete one of your opponent's digimon and then you know delete all your opponents Digimon you want the lowest play cost board wipes are huge like i said before clearing out those slower turns when they're not adding pressure right away is going to make some value there because sometimes they'll just wait before they go in and then the board is just too wide and then you're in a problem and you have like congo here that shuts them down from being able to swing as well and then you have like breath of the gods that your your opponent's digimon can't attack a player stuff like that does add up and can come up if hit insecurity and ultimate flare as well then purple's got some decent tech belfamon sleep mode is really annoying for this deck because they don't they, if they're not perfectly set up, Balfamon sleep into rage can really punish them. Sleep mode is just one of those nasty cards. If they don't get going, they're gonna have some problems. You you can minus the DP threshold with the you know deck, but the problem comes down to rage mode it hits for 16. I think if we're, if I remember correctly, if I type in rage right now, let's take a look. Well, he hits for 17, which is a high number that the deck needs to really apply get going and get ready for if they give you at least a decent amount you could set up just to get going and just get that dp threshold but that that reaching this this is important if you can't kill that 14 right off the bat alpha bond rage mode just cleans house and you're just gonna have some problems you know death x being able to de digivolve their board and then pop it they they have to get to that 15 threshold after they you cleared their board you know, Ruin Mo can shut down their day really hard just because they can't promote up and if they can't promote up. They're not getting the extra bodies. They're not getting the extra resources and Ruin Mo just will sh just shit on them. Then you do have some yellow cards. Emperor is a very hard counter for this deck because a lot of their Ukumons requires you to start a main. If you gave them one memory and the Emperor's on board, if they have to, they're not going to be able to promote that Uku for a bit until they can get to three comfortably. And a lot of them don't play memory tamers of any sort. Keeping that in mind, the Emperor is going to punish them because you're going to basically move it over to gain two. And that's basically happens in the breeding phase. That's not even start of your turn. Basically, if it happens, you're, you're going to really punish them a little bit. And then because it passes their turn, they lose out on some of their effects because your turn, it's your turn. If it's not anymore, they don't activate. Digimon Emperor can really punish that deck, especially if there's two of them. The deck can't keep up and there's no way they're going to be able to, you know, keep turn if they're promoting up their Ukus. Merciful mode, reason for this, this kills any of new Maimon's progression. Being able to reset their whole shenanigans is important. What do I mean by resetting? It means 
removing that trash and putting cards like Platinum New May, New Mamon X into that bottom of the deck out of their way, they're not going to see that again all game. Stuff like that means that they're not going to be able to apply pressure. Then like Paladin Mode, just being able to return all your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolutions to the bottom of their owner's deck in any order. Really just being able to do stuff like that matters. And sometimes they only have bodies with one Digivolution or because they are playing things by effects, there won't be any evolutions. Then Paladin Mode can clean up a little bit. But all in all though, I think these are a lot of good, decent texts to kind of just help deal with Numemon. I know Numemon can be a bear to deal with, but sometimes you just have to deal with it. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll catch you next one.